Avacoda. In today's lesson, we're going to practice updating and deleting records in our table, as well as working with conflicts. Let's begin. All right, so let's remind ourselves how the deletion works in Postgres. So let's type select all from our table employee and let's pick a record we want to delete. So it's gonna be this one. So as you can see, ID is equal to two. And in order to delete this particular employee, we'll need to use this condition. I'll show you what I mean. So we type delete from the table name employee. If I'm going to execute it right now, I'm going to delete everything. I don't want to do that. So I need to add the condition I was talking about where ID equals two. So let's have a look how our table looks now. And as you can see, it starts with the record, which has got an ID of three. So the previous record was indeed deleted. But we can also use other types of conditions in our delete statement as well as combining them. So for instance, we can type select all from employee where email is like. So we're going to search by the pattern and inside the single quotes are going to use two percentages this is the wildcard and I'm going to put Google between them and the country of birth should be equal to, let's say, China. That basically means find me all employees born in China who has got an email which contains Google and any number of characters before and after. So let's say I want to delete all these guys. I need to remove the star as well. So that shows me the three records were deleted. Let's check this out. Yes, indeed. We don't have data that complies with those conditions anymore. But what if we don't want to delete? What if we just want to update our records. So in order to do that, we're going to use the keyword update. So we're going to select everyone from our table again. And let's have a look at the first record. As you can see, their email is blogloving.com. Let's say Mr. Klaha doesn't want blogloving as his email anymore and wants to change it. So in order to do that, we can type update the table name and set the email equal to inside the single quotes. We're going to put what email we wanted to be set to. Bear in mind that if we would have executed the statement as is, then all emails in our table would change to this curry at mail.com. But we have a constraint to prevent that from happening, as you remember. And in our case, I'm going to set up the condition. I'm going to change the record with ID three. And let's have a look. So we're going to type select all from employee table where the ID would be equal to three. And we should see that email was changed to mail.com. Marvelous. We can also update several fields at the same time. So imagine Mr. Klacher wants to update his first name and a last name as well. So we're going to type update employee and then set first name equal to Jane. Now, actually, the gender is specified as male. So let's rather specify the first name as John and the last name 
will specify as Do. The email can reflect that change. So John Doe at let's say gmail.com and nothing else. That means all other fields will remain as they are. And we set up the condition where ID equals three. So update successful. And as you can see, the name, the last name and the email are changed once again. As you have previously seen, if we'll try to insert something with the identical ID, then Postgres can uh, respond with an error. However, we can modify slightly the behavior, how Postgres can behave on conflicts. So if we'll try to insert into our table name and we we'll specify the fields So what exactly we can insert. Don't put the semicolon there. Just press enter. We have a new line and we will specify the values. Remember the values must be in the same order as the fields. So if we're going to try to insert a new guy called John Doe with the same ID. Don't forget the uh, single quotes for vouchers. So basically we're going to duplicate the same values that we already have in our table. So if we're going to try to insert that, we almost certainly don't forget to specify the type date just before the actual date. Otherwise it will treat it as varchar. So we're going to try to insert that. We're going to have an error. So the ID of three already exists. Fair enough. But what if we don't want to see errors, but we don't want to corrupt our table as well? Well, in that case, we can modify the Postgres behavior. To do that, I will append this command, insert into, just after the values. I'm going to append it with keyword on conflict. And inside the brackets, I'm going to put the field that causes this conflict. So it's going to be ID because ID must be unique. It's our primary key. And then the behavior, do nothing semicolon enter and as you can see no error however no action as well so if we're going to select the guy with an id of three we will see just a single record and indeed just one record however we haven't seen any errors i should also remind you that we have some other constraints in our table for instance we check for email uniqueness. So we cannot have two or more identical emails. However, it wouldn't matter in our case because as soon as Postgres sees the conflict on primary key, it wouldn't care about any other conflicts in our insert clause. So as soon as Postgres sees that ID of three is violated, even if we'll put email inside the brackets, the result is going to be the same. But if we'll use a field in the on conflict clause that is not a constraint, then it's most likely we're going to see that Postgres is going to produce an error because the mechanism is designed that way that it's going to react to the fields that are constraints only. So if I'm going to put on conflict and say the first name, do nothing, then we shall see an error. That first name is not something that is a constraint 
and therefore this operation is redundant. However, we can also change the type of behavior in case of conflict. Let's say in case of conflict, we want to update a record. So if I'm gonna use the same insert clause, but if I'm gonna change the email to something else, let's say google.com, and if I will specify that on conflict, and inside the brackets, I'm gonna put ID, so the first conflict that's going to occur. So when that conflict is going to happen, do update. So I'm telling Postgres when you're going to see the first conflict, update the email record, set email equal to a new value. And I want it to be excluded from the conflict mechanism. So insertion successful and as you can see the email was changed to google.com and this function is called upsert so it's not a keyword per se this is something that um, people that work with postgres invented so as same as branch is um, breakfast and lunch then upsert is update and insert at the same time so here we're changing the first name and an email and I'm going to update the on conflict slightly. So I'm going to add the first name to the upsert command. So I'm going to specify the field that I want to upsert and excluded value for the first name and then enter success and let's have a look and as you can see john was changed to jane and an email was changed to jane doe if you have any questions please ask them in comments otherwise please put emperor's thumbs up toll the bell and subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to talk about foreign keys. That was V, thank you and goodbye.